Welcome. We're going to learn about why the ocean circulation is changing, what are the driving forces behind it, and the mechanisms. We're going to look at variabilities like monsoon systems and the El Nino phenomena. When the amount of sunlight received at the ocean surface or the winds change, the ocean circulation will respond. In the coastal zone, the circulation responds on hourly, daily timescales very fast. While in the open ocean, the ocean is more steady. It only changes on timescales of weeks and months to be fully responding to the changes in the wind and the sun. So we will learn about how these seasonal cycles affect the ocean circulation and how the ocean atmosphere together cause the climate and ocean circulation to vary. Many ocean basins have seasonally varying ocean temperatures because the sun is coming and going with the seasons. However, the most dramatic changes are happening in the northern Indian Ocean, where we have a strong seasonally changing wind, the monsoon systems. During the winter monsoon, the wind blows from the cold Asian continent over the ocean, and the corresponding flow of the atmosphere causes the ocean currents to react, and we see an ocean circulation that is directed westward from the Indonesian archipelago to the Arabian Sea, and southward along the coast of Africa towards the equator. In the other season, during the summer monsoon, the Tibetan plateau warms dramatically, convection makes air masses move up, and the wind goes from the ocean to the land. Moist and wet air is carrying water with it over land and gives the very rich monsoon rainfalls to the Indian continents. At the same time, this reversal of the winds changes the ocean currents, and now we find that the ocean currents are setting to the north in Africa, and moving over towards Indonesia to the southern tip of India into the Bay of Bengal. So the circulation in the Indian Ocean changes its direction even with the monsoon system. The changes of wind direction and ocean circulation have an enormous effect on the coastal upwelling system, which in the summer monsoon season is very strong upwelling of Africa, and the winter monsoon system it's very much subdued. The changes in wind direction also have enabled long-distance travelers to travel up and down the African coast with early sailboats and allowed the Amanis to travel to Zanzibar. In other parts of the world, these changes of the winds are not happening every season. A good example of interannually varying wind systems is in the Pacific Ocean is the El Niño, La Niña phenomenon, sometimes also called the Southern Oscillation. Oceans and atmosphere work together to set up the mean wind patterns and mean ocean circulation. We have warmer temperatures in the western part of uh, uh, Indonesia, where we have atmospheric uh, air rising. Uh, the winds aloft blow towards South America and sink down. But over the equator, you have surface winds pushing warm water from the African continent, the American continent, towards Indonesia. Now this warm water piles up uh, on the Western Pacific and gives what we call a warm pool and gives a circulation that pushes the warm water towards uh, the Western side of the Pacific and brings upwelling cold water towards the coasts of Peru and Ecuador in South America. Now the atmosphere and ocean work together to set up this phenomenon. Some years we find that these weak winds start to get disrupted. We have maybe a bit of warming, maybe the sun is different, the clouds are different, and all of a sudden, that warm water, which is piled up in the Indonesian seas, rushes over towards South America, subdues this, the upwelling system there, and brings warm, anomaly surface water towards the west coast of South America. Now, in Peru, in, uh, in places like uh, Chile, that upwelling system of the Humboldt current is reduced, and the local fishermen notice that this reduction in upwelling, this warm water, usually arrives at Christmas time, and that's why they coined this year's, the El Nino years, when at Christmas time this warm water arrived. It has a lot of consequences for the local people here because the fisheries were much reduced because the cold, nutrient rich waters couldn't come up to support the strong fisheries, and it was a disaster for food security during many years. Today, we see doing an Indio much water, much broader ranging conditions where ocean and atmosphere react to each other and spread that anomaly out to many other continents. The flip side of that effect is the La Nina event. During La Nina, we have stronger winds than normal, more upwelling, cold temperatures, 
off the coast of Latin and South America and much more rainfall and warmer waters over Indonesia. So El Nino and La Nina exchange. Usually the sign flips every couple of years, but it's not, it's not precise, not regular. These are interannual variability caused by the coupled ocean interaction. Other phenomena uh, like El Nino are able to change the atmosphere. They bring up extra heat into the atmosphere and change the atmospheric circulation, the wind patterns. We find that, for example, during El Nino conditions, warmer air is making its way towards the Americas and bringing even rainfall to remote places like California. We also see that changes in the atmospheric circulation have an impact on the Indian Ocean system and influence the strengths the amount of rainfall and the variability of the Indian Ocean monsoon system. So these teleconnections are exciting, really important, and they connect ocean, ocean basin, ocean circulation with the global and regional climate. A different phenomena is happening in the North Atlantic. We call it the North Atlantic Oscillation. This is more an atmospheric variability where the atmosphere in some years is stronger, more winds, more storms cross from the Americas over to Europe, and in other years, it's weaker. Storms take a more southerly trajectory, maybe into the Mediterranean. The shift in the storm tracks causes the precipitation patterns to vary, in particular in the winter season, over Europe or in the Mediterranean. And that difference in precipitation is felt very much uh, by people on land. But the same changes in the winds also influence the ocean. During a strong and positive North Atlantic Circulation Index, we find cold temperatures in the northern hemisphere helping deep water formation to be very active. At the same time, the Gulf Stream shifts slightly to the north and goes a little stronger, affecting with it the dispersion of larvae uh, that are traveling with the Gulf Stream from the Sargasso Sea to the European and North Atlantic waters. Similar phenomena happen in the south, where we see a strengthening or weakening of the subtropical gyres and carrying with it different temperatures, different nutrient cycles affecting the marine communities. So both the atmosphere is interacting on land, but also on the ocean and affecting ocean circulations. And on a very long time scale, these changes of atmosphere and ocean can also influence the climate on a very, on a very global scale. For example, during Ice Age, we find a difference in the amount of sunlight receiving uh, our planet. During an Ice Age, the summer insulation is different, it's weaker, and the northern hemisphere cools. It cools so much that big glaciers are start to develop. We're seeing parts of Europe, parts of North America covered by continental ice sheets, and they have certainly very different climates on our atmosphere, on land, but also on the ocean. The winds move southward, ice insulates the ocean from the atmosphere, and the convection patterns shift, the water doesn't sink as deep, and the Gulf Stream circulation moves towards the equator and we find a very different circulation and different climate in the ocean. So these changes on short times, middle scale, and very long times all have an effect on ocean circulation, and in particular this thermohaline circulation, that heat engine that brings warm water north and cold water south is on long time scales affected by the atmosphere, by atmospheric winds, and we've seen a reduction of that during ice ages and much stronger thermohaline circulation now. Now, how global warming will affect this is one of the big questions that we have in climate and ocean research, and it's in, in the, the center of our inquiry. It's important because these deep circulation draw down CO2 and uh, other constituencies that we find very, very important for us in the climate. So to sum up, variable winds uh, change ocean circulations to alter. We find dramatic change in the monsoon systems. Sometimes ocean atmosphere work together to give this interannual variability, like we've seen in the El Nino phenomena. And sometimes just the atmosphere changes by itself, or climate change causes major ocean currents to shift and giving us big differences in ocean circulation and climate.